So welcome to another edition of the Garner Tackle podcast. We are honoured to have back in the seat <laughs> Sir Pete Springate again. Now we covered lots of ground on the last uh, podcast that we've done with Pete, but there's a couple of little areas we want to concentrate on within this time. Um, and at the end of this podcast as well, on the second half, what you're going to do is any of you that sent in questions for Pete himself, we're going to answer and Pete's going to hand sign a print for you and we'll get it sent out to you. But firstly, Pete, how are you, mate? It's been about oh, a year right. since you was in Laos. Yeah. How's things? All right? Mate, all right, all right. Yeah, good. You've been yeah. busy out fishing much? I've or? been out, yeah, fishing, doing uh, all right, catching a few nice fish. So is it a bit of a mixed bag you're doing, money carp fishing? or you? I you, do, you... Yeah, I just I just enjoy fishing, full stop. Yeah. Don't matter whether it's carp, bre- not bream so much, but uh, carp, roach, barbel, whatever. Don't matter. Just whatever floats your boat and yeah. gives you that what, buzz. Whatever I... Uh, Doing at the time. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we're going to do, Pete, we, we didn't touch much on this last time. I think we saved the best for this podcast. Um, we're going to wind the clock back now to 1978, which still 78. shocks me. It still shocks me now when I say 1978 to a certain lake where you caught a brace of a 36 and a 38. 36 and a half and a 38 and a half, yeah. And that special lake was called Yodney. That's right. Now, as much as that being an iconic brace, e- even back then, you know, it even was in... at the time. At the time, it was the record brace. Yeah, it was the biggest brace in the country. But even in today's standards, that is still a, a, an amazing brace of fish to have yeah. now. You know, but we're going to sort of wind it all back a little bit uh, again. Nineteen seventy-eight. I can't stop saying it. You know, because it's still <laughs> still <laughs> catch fish that big back then was 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 unheard of. But we want to know a little bit about. Yovni, the lake itself and the history of the lake, because we were chatting a little bit about it earlier, but tell us a little bit about Yovni itself and how you came to find it. Well, it was uh, <coughs> on Hall and Co's ticket. Uh, at the time, it was just a little lake, uh, probably, I don't know, four or five acres maybe, mm. right next to a, a road. And it was known as a good 20s water back in them days. And this is going back free lining when we used to free line baits. And uh, the likes of Tom Mindrum, John, John Carver, uh, I don't know if Jack Hilton fished there or not, but it was known as a good 20s water. And uh, I, had a, I had a ledger sport ticket, or not ledger sport, it was our, our uh, hauling co at the time. I had one of their permits so mm. I could fish there and I, I had a look at it oh yeah it was uh, chuck a block with weed yep anyway I fished it I had some big eels out of it but I never managed to catch a carp but not this was sort of before 78 this was probably about I don't know 76 70 mm. well probably even before that but anyway, uh, it was hard water. I mean, one bloke, he said to me, he'd done 40 or 50 nights on there and then hadn't had a fish, like, you know. And uh, anyway, so it was known a known water at the time. And uh, I met a bloke called, uh, I called him the Baron. <laughs> and it turned, his, his name was uh, uh, Jeff Spooner. And he had a bivvy up. That's when I first sort of saw a proper bivvy. It was a canvas bivvy. Not like. Scruffy Bob sort of style. Yeah, but it was made in Guildford. Uh, Alfred Ball mm. was making them. And uh, so anyway, we managed to get a couple of bivvies. And um, he had optics in his bloody bivvy, like, you know, want a drink, Pete? You know, and all this. But it was a lovely place. And anyway, I fished it for a while, and then, as I say, I didn't catch nothing. I went down to Darrant then and fished down there, and then I came back again. And it wasn't until, while I was there, they was digging another pit out across this stream. Because these lakes, they're they're around the Staines area, aren't they? Oh, you're right, the Staines. Digging these lakes, were they for the M25 back then? Is that why they were digging for that? No, 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 because the M25 wasn't even for at the time. Uh, they dug 
I was digging this other lake out, great big lake like at the back there. And I thought, it's a bloody hell, this big. And I see him landscaping it. And uh, one, I, was, I don't know who I spoke to, but somebody said to me that he thought the fish had gone from the little lake into the big lake. And I thought, well, how would they have done that? And there's a stream that joined the two. But in the summer, it was dry. Mm. And I thought, no, nah, it can't, kind of got through. Like. And then I was going down to fish for pike at Kingsmead one winter, and the, it was all flooded. All the way through Raysbury was flooded, and I had water coming in the, in the, mm. in the van as I was driving through. And I thought, well, that must have been the time that these fish, if they did go through, went That's through. That's how they got there. So anyway, that close season, I was with my mate Kenny, we had walked all round Kingsmead because it was a close season. So we used to go looking, see what we could see. Went all round Kingsmead, we went all round uh, Raysbury, Raysbury 1, Raysbury 2. And I said to him, let's go and have a look at this uh, big lake at Yeovany there. Anyway, as we walked round, we got halfway up one bank and I see this carp. There was a couple of bars, and I see him come across this bar, and I said, "Ken, look at that! It's got to be a thirty-pound carp, like." And uh, anyway, we decided then that we'd trickle a bit of bait in that close season. So we was baiting there, we was baiting Longfield, and we was baiting Raysbury. Plenty of options there. Yeah, <laughs> and I think we'd done the first week at Longfield. I think we might have had one or two fish. I, I can't remember now. But anyway, we went on to uh, uh, Yeovany, the big lake. You weren't supposed to fish it at the time. It, you could only fish the little lake. Like. Mm. But it was so big, we managed to get where we see this, this carp, there was big overhanging willows. And we tucked ourselves in there, just with a brolly like. And I think the first night, uh, or the first day, I had an 18 pound black fish, like mm. absolutely black, fucking over the moon I was. So we decided we'd spend, a f you know, the rest of the season on there. And we, Kenny had, which turns out now to be shoulders, uh, that was about 20 pound mm. at the time. And we thought, bloody hell, like, you know. Anyway, we kept walking around the lake and it was a big, about 70 odd acres, mm. like. But it was chuck a block with weed, and we knew if anyone walked along the bank any time, all the birds just went mad. Like so, we knew if anyone was around, like because walled. we never saw Free walled. Walled. yeah, we never saw anybody. And um, anyway, we went round to uh, the other bank uh, up the top end. There was the weed. There was all these fish in amongst the weed. And I, I thought, it's a bloody hell, it's all carp, like. And not one of them looked over 20 pound, but they was all in this way. So we went up, we went back up, sort of over the weeks, we made floater cakes, and I was cutting floater cakes up to a little quarter ch uh, squares, catapulting them out onto this weed. And I only ever saw one carp take one bit, <laughs> like, you know. So that was that. Anyway, as the season progressed, uh, Kenny was going down to a mate of mine in Somerset, Johnny Perkins, for a week's fishing. So I said to him, well, I said, next week while you're down there, I'm going to go round and try and get on the other bank because that was where the wind kept sort of going. Like, and there was like a little point on this other bank. Fucking walk. I had to park, park my van fucking miles away and I'm walking with all my gear. I got around there and I set up for the first uh, weekend. And uh, So were these pretty barren lakes, sorry if you don't mind me asking. Back then they were fairly new pit, this lake. It was yeah. fairly recently done. But it had been left. It was left. Yeah, it's just overgrown. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, anyway, I uh, done the first weekend. I don't think I had anything, but I put some bait in. And I see a couple of fish roll, like, which gave me a bit of confidence. Gone back again. Oh, and by this time, I've sussed out that if I drove into this farm 
I could drive across the railway track and park in a barn quite near to where I wanted to fish. So that's what I've done. And because, uh, oh, that's right, because when I parked, bef when I had to walk miles, where I parked my car van, Uber mm -hmm. van, this is, it got broken into. And I had a load of stuff nicked out of yeah, it. Yeah, because you was working for Hoover back then, wasn't yeah. you? Maybe you said on the last podcast. So, and lucky enough, my scows were under the seat because I bought some big scows, like, you know, at the time. You, couldn't, you could only get the... Uh, them ones that went to £32, pound, the little white the ones. Of, sort, so, sort, sort of, uh, uh, Avon. Avon. Avon scows. And I've got some big, proper sort of scows. Yep. They were under me seat in the van and I thought bloody hell I'm glad they didn't get nicked so I took them out of the van then I found this new place to park and that's why I found it because of having me, yeah. yeah anyway uh, I went back and I caught a, a 24 pound mirror it's still absolute, then is a big fish isn't it's it for that absolutely time. stunning fish no one around to photograph it or nothing and then a, a bird watcher come walking past and I said, yeah, mate, mate. I said, do us a favour. I said, can you take a photo? He said, oh, yeah, sure. And he took these photos for me, and I'm fucking miles away, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it, but that gave me more confidence. I mean, mate, he had an accident down in uh, Somerset. I think the bobbin went into his eye or something, and milk, uh, we used bottle tops then. And so he was in hospital, and he was down there for a week or two, and uh, so sort of putting him out of action yeah. a little bit on there. Anyway, I've gone back, and I've gone back for another weekend, and the fish I see fucking rolling. I couldn't believe the size of these fish. In and amongst weed, in in like holes yeah, in the weed, yeah, you know, just in sort of open water, just you know, porpoises. They're like porpoises, they were, you know. Yeah. And I couldn't believe the amount of fish. And I thought, bloody hell, I've not seen this amount of fish. You know, when you say size. open water, were they uh, quite a way out? You know, probably yeah, not they in today's were. terms, they were. you know, yeah, you can whack them were, 50 yards. But. Yeah, they were, I don't know, sort of 50, 60 yards out, I suppose. So back yeah. then out of your reach. Well, I could have got there with leads and all that. Yeah. But, I, you know, but it gave me confidence mm. and I was baiting close in. Because I found a little bar close, uh, just a little little way out. When I say a bar, it was about uh, 12, 13 foot or more down. Like You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there was another one even deeper. But anyway, I, I, anyway, my mate came back, Kenny came back off of, from Somerset, and I told him about the fish that I'd seen rolling and porpoising and whatever. And he wasn't back at work, he was still off work. And I thought to myself, I'll bet he's down here next week. But on the Tuesday, we had a BCSG meeting at the Crooked Billet in uh, Staines. Yep. So on the way to the meeting, I went down and threw some bait in that evening like before I went what to the What bait meeting. was you putting in there out of curiosity? Because we're going back Robin to the Red. 70s now. So I'm it was Robin Red. boilies or, or? Boilies, yeah. yeah. I made boilies, Robin Red. Yeah. And uh, I baited the margins up with it of where I was fishing. So on the Thursday, when I went back, I was expecting my mate to be there. And he wasn't. And I thought, oh, well, bloody hell, I'm surprised he ain't here, right? But when I got to the swim where I'd been fishing, a raft of weed had <laughs> come in, and I'm as big as this room. Company spots. And I. Uh, it took me a couple of hours to drag this weed out and pile it along the side of the bank. Right? And uh, anyway, eventually I got myself sorted, put my rods out and uh, sort of settled down. And it, this was September then. And uh, it started to get sort of, you know, starting to get dark sort of thing. Mm. All of a sudden I heard a fish crash further down the lake. And I thought to myself, oh, maybe I should have gone down there because I made a little spot further down just in case. So you always had like a backup spot yeah. that you was making on the lake, yeah. And I uh, heard this fish crash down further down. And I thought, oh, I've made a wrong, done a wrong <laughs> in here. Like. Anyway, 
all of a sudden, beep, beep. And then the old indicator's going up to the butt like an ostrunk. And I've hooked this fish, and I'm not kidding you, all hell let loose. It's gone out, and out about, I don't know, 40 yards, 50 yards out, there's a reed, a raft of what reed, weed that was floating on the surface that was as big as a football mm -hmm. pitch, right? <laughs> He's gone straight for that. He's going straight for it. I'm clamped down. I could feel the corks under me rods just creaking, right? And I thought, well, it's shit or bust. I've got to stop him, right? But I didn't. It fucking got there, like, you know? <laughs> So I just held on as hard as I could, and in the uh, dark, and the, I could see the tip of my rod against the sky, and I could see it just moving like an inch at a time. Just slowly coming. And I just kept the pressure on and on and on, and I just kept pumping and pumping. Anyway, eventually, oh, I forgot to say, the 24-pounder I had, right, before, the couple of weeks yeah. before, where I was on this point, I looked at it, and it had gone round into the bay, so I'm having to, I had to go round, sort of follow it round. Follow it, what pace it round, yeah, yeah. And it was like spindly willow trees that had just grown. And anyway, I managed to get round it. By the time I got the fish and got it in, I, my landing net was back in the swim. <laughs> so I, I lift it up with my hands and get it out. Like, it back. And... Uh, bloody playing this carp, right? And I've got it right. And all I could see was all this weed, a big ball, ball of weed. Of weed like, and I'm thinking to myself, is, that, is the fish there or not? And then I felt the kick, and I thought, yes, it is. So I put my landing net in the water, and I pulled as much as I could over the net, lifted the net, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, this, the fish was down there. <laughs> Outside the net? Yeah. Oh, so I thought, oh, Jesus Christ. And then I saw the size of it, and then I fucking shit myself. <laughs> I thought, Christ almighty. So then I've, the net's on the ground, and I'm frantically grabbing the weed, trying to get, and I could feel the line greatly, right. you know? What line are you using now, out of curiosity? So let's uh, put your set up, because probably now... Cast. Yeah, because now they've got three and a half pound test curve rods yeah. made for, for, uh, for getting fish through yeah. this. What your yeah. rods and line no, were? They weren't nothing like that. <laughs> but anyway, I managed to. Frankly, I was sweating, and I could see this fish is fucking. Going, and, I kept getting, and I thought, Jesus Christ, if it, if I lose this fish, I thought this is what's going through my mind at the time. If I lose this fish. Nobody is ever going to believe, believe the size no. of it, like, you know. So anyway, I'm fucking... And I don't know how long it took me to clear the weed. And at one time, I thought to myself, well, I, I managed to fucking and lift the other one out. I could do that with this one. And I've got it to the bank. Nah, no way. As soon as I put my own hand down, it was gone again. So I thought, how the fuck am I going to get it? And anyway, I managed to get the net, and I had a spring bow landing there. Mm. So I thought to myself, if I put that straight down like that, behind the fish, get it in as far as I yeah, can to the yeah. bank, and then put it forward. behind it, right? Yeah. Chances are he's going to go back out and straight into it. In the net. And he fucking did. And don't ask me how <laughs> I did it, but he fucking went, and I grabbed the arms, the two arms of the net, and just scooped it towards me. And I thought, fuck, fuck for that. And big sigh of relief. Bearing in mind, no unlocking mats or nothing like that at the time. So I carried it up the bank onto the grass. And I looked at it and I just couldn't believe the size of it. And all I remember was these scowls. And they looked like gold sovereigns, big gold sovereigns. And I thought, gee. Because we got fish. a picture of that actually. Yeah. One of those, one of the, 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 and the weight of this one was this. Uh, yeah, it's thirty-six and a half. Which, but, uh, and I didn't have my scales. I only had my Avon scales. This one here, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I had my Avon scales, and uh, I put them on, uh, tried to weigh it, and it 
boom, straight down at the, you know. Bottomed out, as yeah. they say. So I thought, oh, fuck it. So I didn't have any big scars in the van because I'd taken them out because the van got broken into. So I thought, so, well, the only thing I can do is sack it up, go to the pub, the Five Bells or whatever it was called, the Sunk yeah. Bells, and phone me mate Ken. Yeah. So anyway, I sacked it and I fucking went back across the railway, went to the pub, and I've gone in the pub and I'm shaking, like, you know. Yeah. And I probably thought, who is this coming to pub? Like? I, 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 could see the, I could see the phone, the white phone it was behind the bar. And I've gone in, I've ordered a pint, and I said, uh, and I'm trying to roll a fag. I said, excuse me, love. I said, can I use the phone? She said, yes, yeah. brought the phone over to me. So I phoned up my mate, and I spoke to his mum. She said, he's out playing darts. I said, ah, oh, bloody hell. I said, well, can you give him a message for me? She said, well, yeah, what's that, Pete? I said, tell him that I've had a £30 cart and I need him to come and photograph it. Pronto. You know, when he can. She said, yeah, I'm, I'll tell him when he gets in. So I said, right, thanks. Put the phone down, had me point, got back to the lake, and I thought, fuck, you know, I don't believe this, you know. Oh! Yeah, that's right. Because I couldn't get him, I phoned me uh, dad. Right. Right? And my dad ain't a fisherman or nothing like, you know. And I said to my dad, I said, here, do me a favour, Dad. He said, what? I said, can you go round to my place? Because I lived in Battersea. Uh, my, my, my dad's place was in Battersea and I had moved in a uh, flat in Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So I said, and can you go over to my flat, get me big scows? I said, Maureen will tell you where they are and she'll give them to you. And if you bring her, she can show you where I am. I mean, I've caught this bloody big crap, Dad. I said, and I want to weigh it. Like, oh, right, OK, he says. So I thought, oh, that's good. At least Lid's going to come down. So anyway, I'm sitting there, and about a couple of hours uh, later, well, I don't know when it was, the three of them turned up, me mum, me dad, and me other half, Maureen. And they've had to walk miles because they <laughs> got stung all the yeah. way through. What time was this out of QS? Because this was quite it's, late then. Yeah, well, it was about seven o'clock, half seven when I hooked this hooked first six. Yeah. And I don't know what time it was when they arrived. But anyway, my dad come with the scan and they couldn't, he'd never seen a fish like that before. And they was blown away. So anyway, me and my dad, we got the, uh, the scows onto a bar and we held them between us and... 36 and a half, right? Christ. So anyway, I, I, I thought to myself, well, I ain't going to fucking... I didn't... In them days, trying to take a photograph in the dark was a fucking no-no <laughs> sort of thing. So I thought, well, I'll wait and see what, if Kenny turns up. So I put it back in the sack and left it. And then I noticed it kept fucking... And I had to put two bank sticks down. Keep each it. To yeah. Keep it. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, maybe I'm going to have to, you know, let it go, like, you know. And then it calmed down, and I thought, oh, that's good. And then they've got, they've gone, and the next thing I knew, I went, beep, 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 on the other rod, which was right in the margin. Right? Had the other rod been put back out, so you only had one rod left in the walls, was it? Only two rods then, you only had, had the one. three rods out, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, I, I, I reeled in when I went out of the pub and then, cut, then went back and put them out because I was only fishing the margins. It was easy just to drop yeah, it down. Yeah, plop them on. And uh, this rod went, or was buzzer went, and it? So I picked it up, struck, and I thought, fucking hell. And it just it didn't fight. Just strong. I thought, myself, what the fucking hell? Anyway, it came to the surface. Sort of, oh, fucking hell. And I quickly got the net, slipped the net underneath it, and it was straight in the net with no problem at no all. No battle, like, really, no, like, like no, what you had with the last no. one. Fucking lifted it up onto the craft. <laughs> and when I sort of parted the mesh and the weed, I thought, Mr. Christ, I might, this is bigger than the last one. And I just couldn't believe it, like, you know. 
And I, there was no big trees around for me to hang the scows up or anything. So, I thought so myself, just quickly, instantly, mum, dad, and the gone. missus gone. Now you're, gone. you're you're on your own again. Yeah. And what time was this that you got this this, this session? This was bar? probably about eleven o'clock at night. You know, round about that time. Yeah. And uh, I thought myself, um, I, I've got my scows, so I, I've fucking tried lifting it. I've got it on the bar and it kept hovering around the £40 mark. It was going over the £40. I bet you just, can believe it. And I thought, oh, fucking hell, and I just couldn't hold it still, still enough, you know. So I thought, oh, I'll have to wait and see if Kenny comes in the morning and I'll fucking... Because I thought myself, he ain't going to come tonight now, right? So I put it in the sack, sacked it, and I was up all night, you know. Yeah, you, you, you always, if you got them sacked, yeah. you always panic, don't you? And uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning... The third rod, that was just the one rod left out, beep, 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 struck nothing. But I had had that several times before I caught these fish. Yeah. It was getting runs like that and catching nothing, or getting hooking nothing, mm. like, you know. And this was before the air rig and all that. So anyway, uh, Kenny turned up about nine o'clock, half nine in the morning. He said, well, how big was it? How big is it? I said, which one? He said, what? I said, well, I've got two. I said, no. I don't know how big the other one is. He said, fucking hell. So anyway, we got the, uh, the other one out and we weighed it and we put it up on the scars and it was hovering between 38 and 39 pound. And so we called it 38 and a half, like, you know. Jesus. But, uh, yeah. Well, that's so, a pretty, yeah. pretty crazy Brace of fish, like I say, even in today's standards, you know. Um, and we kept it quiet, or I kept, I said to Kenny, I said, fuck me, I said, if you'd seen the amount of fish I'll see like the week in before, I said, we've got a fucking, you know, we fish here right through to, to, till Christmas. So we did. We never had no more bites. Oh, after that, I don't think no. you'd have been disappointed. And, but, uh, well, what we're doing, is, not saying we're going to talk about now, is, is I know you brought a little bag of goodies in. Oh, yeah. Some of the stuff that you use, so we'll uh, we'll have a chat about that. Well, funny enough, I did. Yeah, they they were the leads I was using. Wow. Right. So the, these are the actual leads. Pete, because I mean, I'm looking at these, and <laughs> today's standards, that's a back lead. <laughs> yeah, I know, I quite agree. And these but, were the actual leads yeah. that caught those fish I'm holding oh. in my hands now. Yeah, I um, had to make them up out of a bit of bar road tubing, and then that piece there... Um, the ring was, section. Yeah, yeah, the ring section was uh, a bit of air tubing cut off of a... An air tube that goes into a, a tank, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's a part of the hose section, basically, yeah. and, and cut a sliver off. And... Just so it sort of, st you know, because uh, in them days, if you wanted anything, you had to make it yourself. Not like today's, no. where everything's done by design, I mean, isn't it? Because don't forget, we used to fish with no lead at all. We used to free be free lining. lining. And... Um, this is what I uh, used at Yeovan to catch them fish. Wow, wow. I mean, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Like I mean, I, said, I weren't casting miles out or anything like that. I mean, it was only, you know, just a flick out. A flick out, it? yeah. I mean, like I say today, you know, everyone's using three, four, five ounce yeah, leads, know. you know, and, know. and you look I at this. I yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's fashion, maybe whatever you want to call it, but to be fair, you know, I like a heavy lead because it can set the hook, but, yeah. you know, it just proves even back then with a... We don't get any, even then... We was putting the hook straight in the bait. Weren't no air rig or nothing. No, just piercing yeah. the straight yeah. through the bait, side hooking yeah. as you call it. And and so that was your lead setup. Um, yeah. Literally down to a swivel to a bead. So this yeah, was like a running a little, little link. Yeah. Crikey! So what other goodies have we got? In this. So that was your lead setup. And yeah. like I say, you was running through bits with us earlier, and I was I was amazed by some of this. Uh, well, it all depends what you want to know. Oh, there were so many <laughs> this... bits in there, but you got rages. Yeah, explain these, these, these. Now these, well, first of all, I suppose, going back to the heron, heron heads, 
Because that's what you was using then, was, was uh, herons, herons, bite alarms. Yeah, yeah, bite alarms. When I was uh, tench fishing at uh, Roach, uh, uh, tench, tench fishing at Raysbury for uh, tench, fishing at Raysbury, the herons, he had the heron head, and then I was pulling down and putting uh, silver paper on the spool. Yeah. Oh, on, on the ground. Yeah. I was fed up with sitting there all night trying to watch that bit of silver paper. Like. So where I was working in the factory, we had little tiny bulbs. So I made up a little jack plug that went into the bottom of the air. So the alarm head. didn't have the jack no. plug on it? You, you no. integrated that no. into the alarm? No. the arm and the heron head. I altered so the arm was uh, slightly different, better than what it was originally. Yeah. These were like a bobbin thing you could buy and screw. Look there, yeah. I see, yeah. But these were like a bobbin that you could clip on the line. So I thought myself up and fit a bulb in that. So these were actually available on the market? Yeah. As, as, a, as a bobbin for fishing yeah, then, yeah. yeah? And you've integrated yeah. the LED yeah. or the bulb, the we wouldn't have had LEDs then, yeah. into that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I put a little jack plug in the bottom of my heron heads. So that, when I got a take, used to light up. Yeah. So that was then. So when I was fishing again at Raysbury, and this was like a few <laughs> years later, because I was having problems with the boats, picking up the line as you're fishing, I thought myself, well, if I put them, that end piece, on a knitting needle, right? Yep. Stick it and in. And that is a knitting needle. Yeah, it is a knitting needle. Into the bank, I could have my line coming straight down. So this it. went in front of the tip. Yeah, yeah. Your line's as, off, as off as the tip ring. As I could get them. Down. Into the water. And out. So the water's here sort of thing. Yep. And so, just to keep the line down out of the way of the boats, that was the thing. Yeah. So that I came up with them, and they worked all right. Right? And then I progressed. Then I come up with uh, these. Oh, this was An old boy, sure. an old boy who was a bailiff on King's... He was bailiff for Kingsmore Anglers. And he uh, used to come around and uh, see us every weekend. He used to make me all bits and pieces, like, and I got him to make me a mould for these leads. I told him what I wanted. So this, this lead that we're going to see now, that is your mould yeah. and that's your idea? Yeah. I asked him to make us a, a, a mould for these leads because I wanted... And he made me these moulds. He got two different weights... And then you got a hole going right the way through. Yeah, so it's hollow all the way through. Yeah. yeah. I inserted a cable, cable tie, tight. a swivel at the other end, and that goes on the cord. Yeah, which is shown on this yeah. one there. We're showing them on the camera as a, as a yeah. B roll. And then it slides down the line, and you can have it as far out as you want. Because you got the, and then when you uh, strike, it just comes straight Pop out. It out. Easy as anything. So this is the first captive back lid. Yeah, I mean I showed Isn't Fox it? these yeah. years ago, and oh yeah, that's yeah yeah. And um, next thing I knew, he brought out the captive back lids. Yeah. Okay. So you know, look. I mean, this this is so when. So, what year did you come up with this idea? This was all around before 80, was it? This was still late oh, 70s? Yeah, this, this must have been, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, long before I caught Mary and all that. This uh, is late, mid to late 70s then, isn't it? Quite yeah, it's in the 70s. Yeah. And I used them on the Thames when I was fishing the Thames for the uh, carp on the Thames because you had the boats fucking racing up. And <laughs> right? But it's weird because you look at this... The one when you got them out of the bag. Oh, yeah, I know. Showed, And I'm looking at that, and I was thinking, oh, that looks like a lead he was using, and that was the back lid, but it's, yeah. it's the complete opposite yeah. way round. Yeah. Unbelievable. And again, so forward thinking, you know, and I think this is what obviously separated you from, from what was current at but, the time and other uh, anglers out there. 
But yeah, see, I mean, it's just... Uh, but I, I still use them today in some areas. I mean, on my boat now and again, I use them if it's... If it ain't broke, don't yeah. fix it. No. You know? It's just mad, isn't it? Okay, so there, there were some hooks that you showed me earlier as well, and they were... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They, that, that, again, was another... These, I uh, asked the uh, partridge if they could make me some. Because was uh, that really, back back then, the only real decent hook on the market was a partridge? Well, it was partridge, and it was a sprite, sprite hooks. Okay. I think these might be sprite hooks. Yeah. I'm not sure. But I... Uh, Came up with these, whereas I, so clever. I cut down a piece of uh, a trout hook to yeah. get the eye. Yeah, and you were, we, we, again we'll overlay that on B roll. So what you was doing is basically just cutting off from the bend of the hook. So what was yeah. left was just the eye, and notably yeah. as well, it was an or probably an interned eye on the hook that yeah. was available. So that out turns on the on the back yeah. of the hook there. Yeah. And then got, whipped it on and then put a little bit of tubing on to hold it, super glued it all or whatever. And uh, I showed him a uh, partridge, hoping that he might bring them out. And he said, no, too too expensive to bring, to do like. But now hooks are coming out like that. Yeah, so look at it again. What sort of year was this hook you was using? This was, oh, God knows when. It was years ago. Yeah. Uh, because... You know, looking at it now, the, the, you, again, you were side hooking your bait then. No, I was tying the boat, boat but on. But with this oh, one, yeah. you were tying it on. Yeah, yeah. So really, yeah. Th was this pre hair rig? Or? No, no, I think. Because nowadays, you'd, that would be classed as what's like a slip D rig, the way that performs yeah, now, that's right. or, or like a swivel running up with hook stops. It might have been just before the hair rig, I can't remember now. But. Um, you can see yeah. why you was ahead of your time, you know, and even now, but, they're still sharp. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going my finger. But I mean, as I say, in, in, in those days you couldn't buy anything. No. You had to make it yourself or whatever. Yeah. Did you, be honest with Pete, did you find it more. It was interesting. Yeah. Was, what I liked was trying to source things, going around different places, try, like with bait. I mean, today you can get bait anywhere, but we used to have to sort of try and source a supply yeah. of yeah. whatever. And uh, it's like the landing nets. Uh, the only decent landing net was uh, uh, Dons of Edmonton, yep. the spring boat. Yep. And uh, so you used to go over there, get your landing net in bits and pieces. It was just a magical time, yeah. really, because everything was all new. And he was trying to suss out making different... I used to make my own buzzers, uh, circuits up for the buzzers. Going around little radio shops, getting uh, little fucking transistors yeah. and things like yeah. that, you know. Because now it's so on a plate, isn't it? You know, oh, yeah. and you, you can't. Times times move on, you know. And and again, like I say, my son Ollie isn't really in his fishing. He's, everything is so accessible for them to be yeah. able to fish at range, for them to be fish here, for yeah. for detection of fish, whatever. Um, and and it's I find it quite sad in a way, you know. Like you know, I'm 47 now, and I was what you know, you, you was a, 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 a legend to me you know and to see this sort of stuff where you was that 10 steps ahead of everybody else seeing what you was doing then yeah, is, is, just, is crazy it's just a very good progression wasn't it really yeah i mean it's like last time we was talking about me 10 foot one yep. piece rods but well, these were the because you couldn't fit them in your car so you had no. was that the hoover van you had that still the back then van. and i used to use these these were for trout uh fishermen I used to clip them on that used to go on the guttering thing yeah, on the lip on, above on the, lip, the yeah. around the and roof. And then that would sit on the side of the van and the rods would, and you'd just clip them in. You know? <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's just crazy. It's, you know, because obviously back then, like I say, you couldn't fit them in your van. So these went on the side, obviously yeah. on not, not the near side, the other side, because I'd have probably found a bush yeah. that I'd have snapped them in half on or something like that. But, you know, just but, get the rod, unstrap yeah. them. Just, yeah, 10 foot, one piece rods. And I used to have three rods, so the three rods went on there. <laughs> <laughs> just mad. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely crazy. Fiber tube, I think they was called. Uh, that was the make of, of them. Uh, I'm sure it was fiber tube. And you think now that it's all carbon and the technology oh, yeah. just moves yeah. on and on. And, as uh, you know, we're cast into the city. You know, even sort of you know, younger kids nowadays or whatever, anyone just getting into it. 
to hit 100 yards is such an easy thing now oh, to, yeah. to a standard normal angler, you know, whereas yeah. back then you didn't have all these... No. Um, I mean, I can, I can, I can, uh, there's an island on Raysbury that I remember. Uh, it was a little point and it was an island, a round island out in front of you and I struggled to hit that. And now you could cast... Backwards. Same pass. <laughs> you know, <laughs> How many yards roughly do you think that was? Oh, I've got no idea. No, it weren't that far. But it's now 50 it's... yards or something. Yeah. You know, maybe 60 yards. I can't remember now. Nowadays, it's yeah. just a flick and yeah. and you're there. Just quickly going back again on after you've got these two amazing yeah. fish. Um, a li- a, like I say, a little bit about oh, the lake. Yeah, yeah. Going back going to Going back to these, yeah. We caught, I caught them and I said to Kenny, we're going to we're fish here for the rest of the year and see if we can get, because of all the amount of fish that was in there. So I kept it quiet, didn't tell anybody. And we fished there right up till Christmas, didn't catch any more carp. And then I heard that they were going to drain, drain the lake to build the M25. Right. Because they wanted to get the clay the out. The extraction of that. Yeah. The, the... So I went to the council, I got all the plans, got these plans, and I thought we should, oh, they might leave the end of the lake that we were fishing mm. and just the, the top end might go. But no, they started pumping and I thought to myself, they ain't going to be able to pump this lake out. So how put, many, it's just around 70 acres, you yeah, say? Yeah. And There's a lot was, of water pump out. Anyway, in the end, they put more and more pumps in. And don't forget, it was right next to uh, Colmere. Yeah. Oh, not Colmere. Uh, the Black Mirror. Yeah. Uh, I can't name? remember the name of it, but I know the one's all about it. Yeah. yeah. So, once the water started getting down, me and Kenny kept an eye on it, and we was getting tense and putting them into uh, that lake. Yeah. Uh, I forget what it's called now. I, oh, I can't remember. Gone. Yeah. But anyway, uh, eventually they drained it down enough and they, uh, I was working and I got a phone call from your mate Kenny. He said, you ain't going to believe it. They've netted two fish out of the Oveny and it's your two fish. I said, you're joking. The that first was... two out, you were saying as well? Yeah, first two out. He said, they're now sitting in the Perseverance, having a pint and having their dinner and the fish are outside on the, in the tank on the lorry. So who's got these? This was the EA... Well, got Thames Water. Thames Water. Well, they got them to do the netting, but it was all to do with leisure sports. Mm. Like, anyway, so I shot straight down here. I pulled up, jumped straight on top of the bloody lorry, like <laughs> on the back of the lorry. Opened up the tank, and sure enough, the two bloody fish were there, like you know. Did they have air fighters could... going in the tanks and all that, or they just had air going in? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I could have got them out. Mm. And, I would have taken them and put them in it. Anyway, I went into Percy and there was a guy, the head bailiff at the time was uh, uh, Peter Bryant. And I said to him, I pleaded with him to put them into Raysbury. Mm. And he said, no, they've got to go into Longfield because we own Longfield, we don't own Raysbury. And I thought, ah, fucking hell. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, they've got the water level down even further. And I've gone down there and they're netting these fish out and you should have seen these fish, they were fucking monsters like, you know. And I've got photographs of most of them and I've got the weights and everything. And uh, there was a bloke from the Angling Times, Bill Howes, I think mm. his name was. And he wanted me to photo- he wanted a photograph of me with one of these fish. And I said, no, mate, I said, you ain't going a photo. Because yeah. I, was, I was disgusted the way they were doing it. And uh, they started putting them into Longfield and I went down. I, I was photographing them each as they was putting them in. And uh, I said to one of the uh, water authority persons, I said, surely this lake can't hold this amount of fish you're putting in? He said, no. He said, if it was a barren lake, it wouldn't be so bad. Mm. He said, but it's far too many fish. So I said to this Peter Bryan, I said, look, I said, you can't put any more in here. I said, you put enough in as it is. 
I said, surely the rest can go into bloody uh, Raysbury. Raysbury. So that's what they did in the end. They mm. put the rest of them into Raysbury, like, you know. And then they but, still resided, and you said, one, I think the one, the big one you had that Yeah, that 36, in that came out at 40 pounds. Uh, Colin Sweden had it at mm. 40 pounds, just over 40 pounds. Yeah, I think it came out twice at forty pound, and then it uh, it must have died because it never got seen again. And then the thirty eight, that kept coming out around the thirty four pound mm. mark. Uh, several people had it, and then a mate of mine uh, caught it on off, on a bit of float of cake and moved it into Raysbury. Oh, and, right. and the funny part is <laughs> there was a bloke fishing on there. He was living on the lake. I forget his name now, don't matter. But he was living on the lake and anything that moved is shot and it, like coots, fucking everything, you know? <laughs> he was telling me he'd caught this fish and I knew it weren't even in there, it was in Raysbury, like, and he said he'd caught it in the wheat, like, you know? Mm. And I thought, yeah, okay, mate, you know what I mean? But, yeah. When they drained that lake and you saw the fish coming out, Oh, it was like was there a lot box. of fish that you didn't realise were oh, in there, yeah. you know, like blew you away? Was there a lot of other big fish yeah, in there? Yeah, it was a big lever. It was a big bloody lever of 40 pound. You are joking. No. So there was bigger in there than the two. 40 speed. pound, sort of 30 pound. Which is big for lever, yeah, yeah. so, so, you know, there was, you know, obviously more to go at, which you knew yeah. anyway, but it yeah. surprised you a little bit about yeah. the amount of yeah. big fish that actually... It was just, it was, I was gutted that it, mm. that's what happened to the lake, like, you know, and then when I see him digging it, you know them great big things, like, um, things like uh, extracting the big things. fucking vehicles. Yeah, it was like dinky toys down yeah. at the bottom of the lake. So what's happened to the lake now? Yogi it's now. still there because it's still run by another club, I think now. I is don't it? know who owns it Because you, you still sort of look online, you still see Yogi yeah. there, and there's there's like a couple of lakes all around there because it's Stains Way, isn't it? But yeah. end of an era. Yeah. Oh but, yeah. But how fortunate were you to to, to catch a brace like that? You know, that's um, yeah. I know of like say in today's times that that's still a one hell of a brace yeah. of fish to catch. But okay, well look, we've had a good chat about that. We are now going to ask some questions from our audience. Some yeah, really interesting right. ones. Yeah, so yeah. we'll dig them out, mate. Right. Right. So Pete, we got the questions. <laughs> and incidentally, if you're watching this uh, this podcast and you sent in a question. It's going to get asked. Um, Pete is going to sign live on camera for you one of these beautiful prints that we got from um, Planet Prints. Um, and like I say, Pete's going to sign it live for you on camera. So, Pete, first question is from called John Bent. Um, what got you started as an angler and how did you maintain your motivation through the tough times? If any tough times. Well, I... Uh... I've always, when I was a little kid, I was always fascinated by water and I'd spend all my uh, time up my lakes on my common, just up the top of the road going round. Wandsworth Common? Wandsworth Common, sorry. There was two lakes up there and whatever. And that's where it all began really. And then my uncle, who used to live with me, or live at the house, he took me fishing. And we used to go down to the Thames on his bike, like he cycled down there. And we'd have a little billy can. And when I caught my first little roach, I wanted to bring them home. And I brought two home on the back of this bike with him. And we both got soaking wet because it kept spilling all over <laughs> us. And I took them home because I wanted to show my dad. And um, we put them outside in the garden. And next morning I'd gone down and my dad had taken them and put them up in the pond up the road, like, you know, so I was well gutted. But that's where it all stemmed from. And um, from there I went on to catching bigger fish, mm. s uh, saved up all my pocket money to get myself a three-piece split cane rod, float rod, and it all stemmed from there. And then as time went on, I, uh, when I was a teenager, I was going out with this girl and her dad, he went fishing and he took me to a place called Barn Elms Reservoir, which Bill Penny in the year, in, in the day caught his record ropes from. And it was like 50 foot up in the air, right by Hammersmith Bridge. 
and uh, we fish for roach. And that's where I learned how to be patient because, we, I mean, I had two odd rods. We'd have lobworm on one, bread flake on the other, cast them out into this concrete bowl. And if you got a bite, it'd be a two pound roach. And, it's yeah. Roach. And um, <laughs> you'd be lucky if you got more than two bites a day. You know, so I learned then it is patience. And it also taught me that you had this great big concrete bowl, but there were certain spots in that place where you knew that he was going to get a bite, sort of thing. You know, it, it was and just. That's where the sort of yeah, it all from started from. To, yeah. To catch and it. then after that, I went to different places. And then, as I say, in 1967, we got a ticket for. Raysbury, when that first opened up, and we went tench fishing on there, and again it was a because I'd never seen a lake that big before, and uh, it was a process of sort of being patient, waiting, you know, and it was just a gradual build up from there, like you know, yeah, and yes, and I've always been. That way inclined, mm. you know. I, uh, it don't. It's hard to explain it. I, I could go days, and if I don't catch, if I know the fish is there, or I think the fish is there, I don't matter whether I catch anything for a couple of days. But in the end, I will catch you one, like right, you know. So that's the motivation side of it. Yeah. And obviously, he, he said, like you know, what helps you maintain your motivation through. Tough times. Has there ever been tough times where you've just... Oh, right. I mean, I, I, I went to Raysbury one year, spent all year there and never had a, a bite, never had a fish. And But I know now why, where I went wrong because I had fish rolling in. Every time I baited up, I'd go down and put some bait in. They were rolling like mad after I baited up. Like, and I've got a feeling now that I was putting too much flavour in the bait. It was attracting them, yeah. but yeah, and uh, but no, I've never. I mean, it's not all about fishing, is it? It's but just being, being out there. Yeah. It's being out in the in the wild. You get you sit there, you get all the birds, you get all sorts coming to all. You know, you see things that other people never see. And it's, it's like especially this time of year now as well. I mean, we're in late May now, but you know, you you won't hear that sort of. Cuckoo yeah, that's like me. The other bird. day, I heard the cuckoo, like you know, and I see him the other day, like you know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the seasons, isn't it? Yeah, so for me, it's yeah. all about the seasons. You yeah, know? yeah. And but you know, do you probably fish as much now as you did back then? Obviously, when you were all younger, we more, we got more energy. Yeah, I mean, I've always worked, so I was always, uh, how can I say, I had to fit me fishing around me work, but now, I, now I've retired. I can go when I like. So now I pick me days. Like yeah. I don't have to suffer all them fucking, you know, <laughs> all that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I still get out as, yeah, I still fish as much as I yeah. can. Good. You know? Okay, well, look, we've got a picture there for you to sign. Really good question there from John. If you want to sign that for him live on camera, and John, what we'll do, um, contact us, mate, and we'll get that sent. All right, we'll take this ring up. I have to take the ring off, otherwise it'll it mark. It, no, it just marks the bloody Good. thing. Good question. There you go. There you go. So, John, contact us, mate, and we'll get that sent out to you. What a lovely prize, eh? Thanks. Okay, so let's go on. I'll just put that down there a moment. <coughs> right. Quite a long one. This is from Dan Harrison, so well done, Dan. Um, having fished for carp for many years and seeing huge changes more recently, um, you know, what piece of modern equipment could you not fish without now and or modern equipment you'd rather leave at home? Now, that's a difficult one, isn't it? It's a long question, that one, Dan. Well done. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, modern equipment, are you talking about hooks? I mean, today the hooks are just unbelievable. 
I mean, compared to what we used to use, donkeys well, years ago. We're touching on those hooks we looked at yeah. ago, where you were doing your own design yeah. of hooks. So, you know, obviously now you wouldn't use those. I no, suppose you'd no. buy an off-the-shelf yeah. sort yeah, of Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, uh, when I look back at some of the hooks we used to use, like uh, Gold Strike and uh, uh, the... Some of the yeah, things, you know, yeah, speed barbs and things like that. How we ever caught, I never know. But mm. you know, but uh, no, I mean, us, modern equipment rods today are fucking far better than. Mm. I mean, you can buy. A, I mean, I bought a rod. Uh, oh, I don't know, a few years back at one of the big the big show, mm. fifteen quid it cost me. It's a four piece, right? Little spinning rod. I've had more carp on that rod than any other rod. Any bespoke made. Yeah, or... it is unbelievable. And I was using it the other day. I had two carp on it. It just bends and, you know, it's... Good fun to enjoy yeah. fishing with. Yeah, yeah. So do you, you know, let's go through what you're getting now. Is drones are getting... No, very I don't, no, 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 nothing like that. No, um, I don't... That don't interest you. Don't interest me, no. but boats, bait boats, uh, deeper pros and all nah, that. No, no, I ain't interested in none of that. Because if I can't find uh, the features the old fashioned way, then I might as well give up. Do you still do what you've been doing all those years without yeah. any wrap? Do you wrap up with wrap? No, I've never sticks? used a wrap at all, never wrapped at all. So you'll still mark I'll, a float? Sometimes I, I don't, sometimes I use a mark a float, but I, I prefer not to. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, reason for that? Because of scaring fish? Or is yeah, it's that to it. And I don't know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just the way I've been. Well, it's obviously um, worked over the years, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Um, like rap sticks, I mean. I used to count the an turn of the handle, yeah. you know, real yeah, end. Yeah. Tournaments, yeah. Uh, but each to their own, I've got no. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, like as Dane Lays, uh, Dave Lane says, who, who comes in to see us regularly, one of our anglers, he's, 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 he's fishing by numbers nowadays. Oh, yeah. You, you go into a swim now on a new lake, and it's not like, oh, yeah, if you go out there about eight yards, mate, there's a little gravel area. It's like go out there, right, 20 rats or whatever, and it's there. And, yeah. and it is fishing by numbers now. Well, they've got, you've got it on your phone now, haven't you? Yeah, where, exactly where you, you know, it tells you where to fish. Yeah. Where to, yeah, where I mean, I, don't, I have enough trouble... <laughs> using my phone, let alone anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, if, how do you, you know, the way things have progressed, and again, look, it's natural progression the way things go on nowadays. I tend to look at social media and sometimes anglers, I know it's the way, and I don't mean to speak bad of anybody, but sometimes anglers can be more famous for what they are on social media than oh, yeah, yourself who's yeah. called the fish. What's your take on that? Do you yeah, it don't matter, mate. I, don't, I just... I take no notice, I'll just do my own thing and I ain't worried about what other people are doing. Yeah. I mean, it makes me laugh. I go to some of these lakes and they got these great big reels that could hold about 400 yards of line or whatever. And half the time, the fish are right in the margins. Yeah, margin. I mean, I've had the fish right at my feet and my little eight-foot rod that I've been using is too long, you know? <laughs> it's just... It's crazy because we had Di Gribbling doing a tench podcast for us not long back and he was fishing a well-known carp water but for tench and um, do you know what amazed me he said he's had nine every big fish out of there using tench tactics they've been scaled down mm. he said I'm landing them fish from the bank whereas most of the other anglers are going out in the boat dropping from yeah, the boat having yeah. to go out and land the fish from the boat mm. and he said I've, I don't think he'd even lost the fish and he had some of the big ones out there as well yeah. purely tench fishing on refined equipment yeah. you know so yeah. it's, um, Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. But anyway, right, we'll get that signed for Dan. So I've got another one there for you to sign, Pete. <coughs> and that's for Dan. Dan, if you give us a shout, mate, and uh, contact us. As you can see, Pete's signing that live for you, and we'll get it sent straight out to you. There you go. Well done, Dan. That's on the way. Right. Another question here, this is from Jason Reynolds, and I think I know the answer to this one, Pete, but uh, which carp was the most rewarding to catch, even if it wasn't the biggest? Uh, probably the uh, Yoveny 36, the first Yoveny fish. Mm. 
and then after that I'd say Mary from uh, from Raysbury. Not that it had a name at the time, it was just that I see this fish during the close season and uh, I'd never seen it in the lake before. I knew straight away as soon as I see it, I put, well, the long story is, I walked around Raysbury one weekend, one Saturday, with uh, John, John, uh, Johnny Allen. And we walked all the way around, never saw a fish. And I thought, that's strange, it's, it's such a lovely day. And then when I was at home, I thought to myself the next that night, I thought the only place we didn't look was a little bay right where they, because they was digging another lake, which we named Raysbury, th Raysbury 3, yeah. because it was, yeah. they'd put a channel through to take the water. You know, and I thought to myself, well, I wonder if they had been in that little chunk. And it was a spot where they had opened it up, dug it, and they had to keep every ten years or whatever they had to dig something to keep the license for digging. Yeah. You know, so the next day I got some floater cake, jumped in my van, gone down there, and I've parked in Douglas Lane car park, walked up to this bay. And I nearly trod over the, fell over these fish. They was right in where this water was running See in. See where the inlet was coming in. Yeah. From, so they was yeah. gathering around yeah. where that new fresh. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. And I see these carp, and I sort of got back, and I thought, bloody hell. So then I walked along the bank a bit, and there's a little tree overhanging, and I got up there like. And then I see this one big fish, and I thought, bloody hell, that's big. And I threw some floater out, and they started taking. And this one, he took everything I threw in. It, it's unbelievable. I've, <laughs> I ran out of every, all my bait, everything. It's close season, so I couldn't fish for him. And straight away, in my own mind, I thought, that's got to be 45 pounds without a shadow of a doubt. And I went home, I phoned Kenny up, and I said, my, my mate Ken, I said, I've just seen a carp in Rosebury, and I reckon it's £45 an ounce. And uh, so that gave me the, you know, the, yeah. and I'd gone down to, uh, where is it, Torquay, down that way, um, to, to my mate John's, to fish Kennick Reservoir, yeah. just as the start of the season. And when I come back on the, on the 16th, Raysbury was packed with all these bloody people from Yorkshire, all these Yorkshire <laughs> guys had come down. And I drove in the car park and I thought, thought so bloody hell. And I see Richard Skidmore and I spoke to him and he said to me, oh, he said, there's been four fish out. And I thought, oh, don't tell me that one's mm -hmm. been out. Anyway, it hadn't, and I told him what I, this carp I'd seen, and then it was a few weeks later, I think it was in the 4th of July, he phoned me up, he said, take tomorrow off. He said, he said you've got to get down here. He said, I've seen some big fish in the swimming pool area. I said, I can't, I've had too much time off work as it is. I said, you know, yeah. So um, I got the forecast that night and it said it was going to be hot and sunny. So I phoned in sick the next morning, <laughs> gone down and met him and we was walking up and down the bank where all the pads were and everything. He went one way, I went the other way looking and eventually we see a group of fish come in and we was waiting for them to come up on the surface. Like, and I, I was looking down and I could see they was right down on the bottom, right? And they was going along, and I, where this tree was hanging, it was all clear, clean gravel. And uh, he said to me, uh, you better have a go for it. I said, well, I, I, I've only got a floater. Anyway, I rummaged about in my bag, and I found a borley. I think it was uh, uh, one of uh, Bob Baker's... Uh, Bird food, yeah. uh, whatever it was. Anyway, put that on. I got onto the bow of this tree 
and drop the bait down. I had to get him arm on the tree, he's up the bank, right, and I got him to slide me controller up the line as far as I could. And I dropped it down into a clear patch where the sun was here and see it on the bottom so I could see the bloody bait. He, uh, I mean, we might have spoke about this we, last we time. Touched on yeah. This on the first. And then, yeah, and then uh, they come. Uh, what was pleased me more than anything was I was correct. I was so spot on with the weight, like you know, yeah. forty-five pound. It's forty-five pound six. Mm-hmm. So that was. Uh, and you went up to catch that fish another two times. Yeah, yeah, up to fifty, fifty-one. Which something. was was that mid late nineties, mid to late nineties then? That would have been probably. <sighs> no, yeah, it was in the nine early nineties, whatever. Yeah. It's a huge fish now, let alone back then. Yeah. You know. But, so with fishing nowadays, I mean, you, you've basically always generally caught big fish, not knowingly, but you've fished, and if they're there, you've caught them because you're a very good angler, very good at what you do. But nowadays, with your fishing, is is anything changed? You don't go looking for the big ones, do you? You just want to carry somewhere. No, with well, being. the trouble is now I'm getting to the age where uh, it's uh, how can I say uh, you got to. I've trouble walking uh, uh, too far now, and uh, I get out of breath a bit. That's through smoking all the years, you know what I mean. And so I have to, you know, it's that's why I got a boat. So I don't. He's a pretty fit lad back then. I mean, you got some guns. Oh, yeah. Look at their pictures. Look at their muscles. Look. What was he doing then? He must be doing hundred press-ups a day. No, no, I wasn't. I was working. Catching all them big things. No, it's moving all them washing machines about. (laughs) Some bloody guns on there, mate. Okay, um, well, we'll get you to sign Jason's now. It's a really interesting question, that one. So if you sign that, and Jason, again, if you give us a shout, we'll get this sent out to you. Well done. I nearly made a mistake on that one. I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Second from last question. This is from Stefan Reed. So, is there any lake that you regret never fishing? And if so, which lake and why? Well, it's not, I don't, I wouldn't say regret, but there's a couple of lakes I was... You wish you had. Mate. Yeah. Uh, I was offered a ticket on uh, Save. Yeah. Uh, at the same time that Redmar come up yeah. and because I couldn't afford the two and I didn't have enough holiday time to, I went for Redmar but I would like to have fish Save uh, did you never got to fish Save at all? no I've never even never it, been yeah. never even been on the lake um, Bob Davis I think was running at the time uh, so that was one lake the other lake is Bracken. Bracken's, yeah. And that, that is a f- beautiful water. Yeah. And uh, I should have got a ticket on there. Where is Bracken? Is Bracken... Well, it ain't far from where I live. That's the annoying thing. I didn't... It's still there now? You still couldn't... Well, if I'd, known where, if I'd known it was so close to where I'm living now, I would have got a ticket straight away or put my name down. Is it one of them lakes that if you live within the area, you can sort no, of... No, it's, it's, or... it's a lot of money. Uh, I could have afforded it then, mm. but I can't. It, what with running the boat and that, I can't justify the, you know, because the boat's costing me a thousand pound a year just to moor it, like, you know. Yeah. So. How is the boat? Is it all. Oh, it's great, well? yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, and yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's good, yeah. It's good, okay. I mean, let's just run through some of the places. So you've, you've done a lot of the Calm Valley. All the lakes around Yately. Um, you've done some of the Yately waters, then you've done. I don't, like, yeah, most of and all that. Have yeah. you ever fished outside? I know you've done Darrenf um, yeah. in the early days. Yeah. Did you never push up sort of Cambridge Way or anything like that in further afield? Or did you just no, Stancid Abbott's went up there. Yeah. Uh, no, I never went to Cambridge, funny enough. Yeah, okay. um, yeah no, fish. Uh, uh, one lake that I d- used to like was. Uh, Apart from Ribmar was uh, Fault Pond. Yeah. That was a lovely lake, middle of nowhere. And what uh, about French fishing as well? You ever done, you I've been over there a few times, but 
It don't, it don't give me the buzz. Because right. so, uh, so, his mate, because obviously there was that epic year. See, I suppose, uh, and again, it's down to working and holidays. You know, if I'm going, if I was going to France for a couple of weeks, that meant that I couldn't fish. Oh, you was more yeah. interested by some catching in the UK than yeah. fish them. Than yeah. Fish, you know? yeah. But I'm just surprised that really during that area of Maddox and Alan Taylor and all of those guys when they were out hauling on Cassie and places like that, that you, you, I never really saw your face. In yeah, well, they they weren't working, were they? They weren't bloody. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> have a full time <laughs> job or anything. You know? Day, you know, you got a you got a it's balance. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, look, Stefan, Pete's going to sign that for you live right now. And we're going to get that sent out to you. You've got your glasses on this time. So yeah. It should be all right. There you go. Right, OK, Stefan, give us a shout and we'll get that sent out to you. Right, last question. Well, here's a bit of a funny twist of this one, actually, but... Are you still managing to catch carp by floater fishing every month of the year? Now, this was a challenge you set to yourself. Yeah, i uh, done it for a year, the first year. The hardest month was February, that first year. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I decided to carry it on. And then it got to 12 years. So you carried on doing that for 12 years? Yeah, 12 years, every, years. every year, every month for a quarter carp. Went out specifically at the first of the month to get one under my belt. Um, and then I don't say, last year or the year before, I can't remember the time goes, I wanted to get my boat out the river yeah. and work on my boat. And when I got it out in the uh, well, last year, you found the sea was and the boat was out of the water, so it must yeah. have been that year ago then. Put a couple of holes in the bottom, so that was then I got a boat on my drive, and I thought to myself, Well, it's time for me to stop. So I've done it for 12 years, one month, and I stopped so that I could concentrate on doing the boat and refurbishing it and everything. But I still go out, and I mean, the other day, I was it was two days ago, I had a couple of commons off the top. Uh, I mean. This winter, just probably, I don't know, March time, it was, I couldn't get to, it was difficult. <laughs> One lake I go to, it's on a farm, and you have to go across about three fields mm. to get to the lake. Well, in the winter time, it's a no-no, unless you walk, like, you know. Anyway, uh, I thought, myself, oh, I think it might be all right to get across the fields. So I drove over there, and... Uh, just took the rod, and that little rod I got. Drive over there, found a couple of fish, and all of a sudden, I've hooked a fully scarred mirror, which was about twenty pound, and I thought, oh, bloody, yeah, that's nice. You showed us a picture earlier. Actually, no, that was a different oh, so that was one. A different one. Okay, yeah. okay. This one, I got it in the net. I didn't have no scars with me. I didn't have an, uh, an, the adapter for my camera or anything. And I thought, oh, well, that's stupid. Like, I think I took a photo of it on the, on the mat and then slipped it back. And I thought, right, next time I go, I'll make sure I've got my camera adapter and I've got some scars. So I went back a couple of days later and in the same spot, I caught another fully scarred mirror and this one was about 15, 16 pounds or something like that. Hooked it. Got it in the net, and I thought, right, I've got my unhooking mat, I've got it. So I, was, I laid out my, uh, my unhooking mat, I put a bank stick in the ground, I put my camera adapter on it, and my, uh, so uh, not my camera, but my phone uh, adapter, and put my phone on, all ready, set up. And then I heard it splashing, so I've turned, gone to run, it's all brambles and everything, I've fucking fallen over. So I, you know, and I'm not kidding you, I fell over and I felt my hamstring go. And I was in agony. And I crawled along the bank and I could just see the landing net handle as it's going. <laughs> and, like. Yeah, I fucking <laughs> managed to grab hold of it and pull it back towards me. And then, 
And then I thought to myself, fucking hell. And I got, the fish is still in the... And I hadn't even unhooked it. The fish is uh, still in the net, like. Right? And then I thought to myself, fucking hell. So I, I got um, me... Uh, what do you call it? Forced it. Yeah. Fucking unhooked it while it was still there. I'm laying on the ground, right? In agony. And... Uh, Anyway, I thought to myself, well, I've got the bloody handle in there, everything's set up. I've got to take it and get it a photograph. So I pick this up and I've stagged it up there, this fucking handle in there. I put it down and I thought, fucking hell. Anyway, I've, I'm, I'm standing, leaning, I'm there, kneeling, and I picked it up and the camera's going off. And it was the birds <laughs> fucking singing because I've got it on that whistle that. And yes. it, the, 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 <laughs> it's click, click, and I thought, that's Andy. And then I put it down, and I thought, I can't turn it around and take it out of the other side. I was in so much pain, and I just managed to get it and slip it back into the water. <laughs> and all the time, my camera's going click, click. So I packed all that away, and it took me, it must have taken me an hour. Just all I had was my unhooking mat, my rod, and my little bag, like. And my car was weren't far away, like you know, but I had to get over the barbed wire fence and get, and then driving across these fields, getting out, opening up the gate. I couldn't. I, I was I was uh, in paint for about a week Thank or so. You. Yeah. But for anyone watching, basically, what is the, there's an app you can get for your phone that takes photos for you. And all you do is whistle at it. Yeah. And it will take the photo. And um, we was laughing when Pete was chatting to us early because he said, like, you know, all, it was springs or all the birds were out whistling and that's why it's camera yeah, is constantly yeah. I'd love to see some of the other photos apart from the fish <laughs> that rolling around on the floor. Yeah. Brilliant. But, but look, what that was, question was from Chris Rigby and that's the last one to sign. So thanks for sending that in, Chris. We're going to get Pete to sign that for you now. <laughs> Do you use that app anymore, Pete? Have we stopped using it? No, I still use it. <laughs> Okay, Griff, give us a shout, mate, and that's going to be sent out to you. Pete, thank you very much for coming no, in to see us. No, that's right, yeah. You know, we'd love to have yeah. you back again soon. Yeah, no, So many right. amazing stories that we could go through. And, um, yeah, mate, we really appreciate you coming in to see us. And like I say, we hope everybody's enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah. again, thank you very much, mate. No, that's right. We'll see you again soon. Yes. You take care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>